Savvy Business Radio, home to over 500,000 listeners per month and runs in syndication on eight AM FM stations nationwide, including iHeartRadio and six podcasting platforms. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or to become a guest and find out how we can help you get your message out in a bigger way, call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com. Our second guest is Kevin W. Reese. Kevin has guided and inspired thousands of people to take control of their lives and their health. Hi, Kevin. Welcome back to Savvy Business Radio. How are you today? I am great. Thanks for having me. Uh, you betcha. I'm so psyched to have you. We, you were on my show last year, I believe, and you helped no, me. No, no. Was say, it last year? I, no? Almost three years ago. No. Wow. The, your first book, Diet, De-Stress, Detox, The Formula for Reclaiming Your Health and Vitality, that was three years ago? 2014. Wow, boy, time goes fast. <laughs> Man, time goes fast. Well, that was a phenomenal book. I, I had read it from cover to cover. I uh, did a six-week challenge for myself to detox, de-stress, and detox. And I lost 10 pounds, got a load of energy. And sadly to say, I've gotten back off the wagon, uh, mostly with stress being a major contingent. So I know you're going to help everyone out there because it's January. People start talking about all of these things to get healthy again and, and get these resolutions as they call them. And then they get back off the wagon in February or March or whatever, but we want to keep them healthy and happy going forward. And you're going to do that. So before we get started with all of that and your new program and tease, share a little bit about your background for, with our audience. Yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know me, I, uh, I used to be a radio personality. I was on a professional on air for uh, 12 years. And, you know, kind of lived that high, that high, fast life, if you will. And uh, I was eating a lot of, a lot of bad foods, I've been a food addict all my life. And uh, one day, you know, my body really started breaking down. I was having some, I had a heart attack scare, which, um, wow. you know, I ended up on heart monitors. It turned out, it turned out to be a massive panic attack. Mm. Uh, but of course, when it's happening, you know, <laughs> you, you think it's over, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, so I went through a lot and I went back and forth to the doctor a lot and I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, and even more importantly, I became sick of the doctors not having any answers mm. and they usually don't when it comes to chronic things. Now, maybe they do a short, sharp, intense things, you know, on the acute side, but mm. for chronic things, they, you know, the only answer was pills and I just wasn't down with it. So I took matters into my own hands and, and walked that path and figured it all out on the natural side and then became passionate, went to school for it and, and quit radio and just became a health practitioner. And I'm, 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 I'm uh, five years deep now. So it's been a awesome journey helping people with programs and, and teas and books and doing public speaking all over. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really cool transition. Wow. It's so interesting, uh, Kevin, because I had started my business basically because I was like you. I was totally stressed out and unhealthy. I, I, I've actually gained more weight now since I left corporate. But the, besides the weight, what happened is stress had just overcome my life. And I ended up in the hospital one day at four in the morning because of heart pain, uh, chest pain. And it turned out not to be a heart attack like you. And it wasn't actually um, a panic attack either, but it was a wake up call to yeah. say that what you're doing, how you're living your life is not working for the long haul. Uh, do you want to live your full out glorious life to the fullest or do you want to end up in the grave early? And I decided, no, I, I got to make some changes. And for me, that was f figuring out what, is, what I want to do with the rest of my life and what would bring me pleasure and how could I serve the world in a bigger way. And that's what you did by really taking what's changed your life, health and healthcare, and bringing it to people to make their lives better so that there's an alternative way besides taking medication. Now, how was the transition for you? When you left, did you immediately start helping people or how long was it before you gotten yourself healthy that you said, hey, I could do this for others? Oh, right away. Uh, really? I, I was... I was taking clients while I was still on the radio mm. Mm. and, and, um, and so it just, it, they overlapped each other. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I quit radio, which was, um, November, 2012, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I already had a few clients and, uh, we just went from there. 
And what were you, while you were getting healthy, was there a moment where you said, oh, this is where I belong? How did that work out that you knew that this is my next step? You know, I, I also, mm-hmm. I also saw the wave of where the internet was going. Mm-hmm. So uh, I knew that I wanted to become an entrepreneur. So it was kind of a two headed beast. It was, I want to be an entrepreneur digitally mm-hmm. and I'm really passionate about natural health. And I just, two and two equals four. And I just, I just put it together and ran with it. Oh, fabulous. And I want to ask you, because I've fallen off the wagon and I've told you before the interview, and I know a lot of folks start with this idea of a diet. And really what this is all about, what you help people do is not a diet, but a Mm -hmm. lifestyle change to really overhaul their whole life for the long haul so they could live their greatest life. But why is it so often that folks begin to work to get healthy, but don't stay on track? Why is that? Food addiction is the biggest thing. And, you know, it's something I'm very passionate about. It's something that I've struggled with my whole life since I can remember, you know, as an adolescent, you know, 12 years old and up, let's just say. And uh, it's real. Mm. And, you know, it's something I'm going to be doing a lot of work on a few years down the line. Like that's going to be my, my niche, if you will, my mission. I think food addiction needs to be addressed. I think that we are psychologically addicted to the foods that stimulate us, such as cheese, uh, such as soda, such as candy, cookies, cake, even potatoes. And and we get into the zone where we want to eat, mm-hmm. not only when we're sad, but when we're celebrating as well. Oh, yeah. I know that was a big thing for me. Like if I ever accomplished something, mm. I always went and got a pizza or I went and got some burritos or whatever. And, you know, it becomes like this thing where you, uh, you know, you're feeding the beast inside of you. (laughs) It's interesting. Food addiction is the big thing. And then, (laughs) then not only are you dealing with a food addiction, but now you're dealing with social traditions on top of that. So, um, you know, you're trying to eat healthy and then all of a sudden the holidays come and (laughs) you're hit with all this, all these cookies and, and, and stuffing and whatever else in front of you. you know, and then, and then you got Valentine's day, which is about chocolate. And then you, you know, you got Halloween, which is about candy and you, you got all the Monday labor days that we have off in America that are all barbecues. And it's like, mm-hmm. you have all these social traditions, even as even going to school in middle school, high school, whatever, like they feed us crap and, and it's social traditions that, feed the food addiction. Wow. And I remember reading that in your first book and, and being like kind of opening my eyes to it because I hadn't realized how much of our culture, American culture is kind of revolves around the celebration around food. You get yep. together with friends and even on a Friday night, what do you do? Which is kind of really unhealthy and I did it for years, but you go drinking, uh, drink binges. You go to the bar and you have a good time, all these cocktails yep. and, and you don't think anything of it in your 20s. You just throw them back and then eat a whole bunch of fried food along top of it. Um, and so now you mentioned psychological reasons that we become addicted. Is there also a physiological um, addiction going on at the same time? Yeah, because because these foods, they stimulate our adrenal glands, which are mm-hmm. the, the glands above the kidneys, and they're like the batteries of our Ooh. body. Uh-huh. And uh, they stimulate. For example, if you eat meat, mm-hmm. like steak or chicken or whatever, Okay, that the flesh of that meat has adrenaline in it because the animal was scared when it was being murdered. Mm. So that adrenaline stimulates your adrenal glands, and we don't even realize it. So that's just an example of why people want to keep eating meat, keep eating meat, keep eating meat. They don't realize their adrenal glands are being stimulated every time. Um, So it's kind of like an energy drink, right? An energy drink doesn't really give you energy. It stimulates your adrenal gland. (laughs) If you want real energy, eat five oranges. Wow. And that's interesting. You mentioned that many, many years ago, I read this fascinating book by a woman who works with um, cattle uh, farmers and such to find a way that they could kill the cattle in a way of slaughter them in a way that was humane at the same time where they wouldn't be scared to death while they're being led to slaughter. Because generally in the old, old, old days, they would just kind of 
by one, they would just kill each of them and they would see their partner being killed. And of course the cows are freaking out going, oh my gosh, what happened to Sally over there? (laughs) But she presented a way that they could be slaughtered in a humane way where it would be quick and the other cattle would not be aware of what was happening to their partners. And I thought, wow, and that way the meat would not be full of the steroids and such. I thought that was interesting. Do you kind of advocate not eating flesh at all then, uh, or just maybe eating uh, flesh that's maybe free range? Well, you know, I think it's a personal decision. I, I personally am an ethical vegan, which means it's not about health. It's about the animal. Mm. So I try not to wear leather. I try not to, you know, none of that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's me. Do I promote it heavy? No, I don't. Um, because I'm in the reclaim your health business. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the vegan business. I'm in the reclaim your health business. My work Mm -hmm. is to take someone who does not feel good, has a chronic illness, or just feels like they're going down the wrong path. And my job is to turn that around so that they can reclaim their health. Does that mean that they can't ever eat meat again? Not necessarily, but you know, Certainly on the health side, I advocate if you are, if you're dead set on eating meat, it should only be twice a week. I mean, it it can't be twice a day. I mean, (laughs) it's, it's just simple chemistry. You're going to, you know, you're going to damage your body over time. So, uh, yeah, I I don't promote veganism Uh to the same power, but I try to lead by example. So, you know, if you're, ever at a picnic with me or you're ever at a party with me, Mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to see me doing A, B, and C and be like, why is he doing A, B, and C? And the answer is going to be because I'm an ethical vegan. Wow. That's interesting differentiation you make because uh, I hadn't thought about the fact that maybe we meet too much in our culture. Is that, is that the case? Because you said eating me twice a week max, you would say, do we kind of eat me too much at this point? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. And, and dairy as well. And dairy health wise is even worse than meat. So I mean, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we're eating it way too much. And we also have to understand that the meat and dairy industries yeah. are businesses, we think of them as industries and not corporations, but they are. Mm-hmm. And back in the 90s, Oprah Winfrey, on her oh, podcast yeah. show, she, <laughs> she, she did a show on mad cow disease back when it was just break into the mainstream. And she said she'll never eat another burger and the meat industry took her to court. Mm. So that just shows you that, uh, you know, they are a business and Mm. you know, it's, it's, it's obvious and they donate to our political Mm. leaders. Our political system is financed a lot by the meat and the dairy industry, as well as the other, you know, the candy and the Coke and all that. But you know, they're, these food corporations are running our country, right? Wow. And the pharmaceutical companies who want us to get dreadfully ill from the bad foods we eat so that we could go use their services as well. Yeah. 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 It, it's like the, the food corporations are the offense mm-hmm. and the pharmaceutical industry is the defense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like wow. this, this football team, this evil football team. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something, Kevin, that I was blessed with through going through your first program there, um, that six weeks of eating only vegetables and fruit, mostly fruit. Um, yeah. I had a lot of energy and I did, I missed the meat. Like I won't tell you, it, it was unbelievable. I dreamed about meat yeah. more. And it was funny cause I thought it was going to be bread and carbs, like, you know, potatoes and potato chips and stuff like that. It was not, it was meat. I dreamed of meat and chocolate. but it it was interesting I had a load of energy and by the end of the six weeks I wasn't craving chocolate anymore and I didn't know why and my friend said what are you having in your salad and I said I'm having broccoli and she's like that's it Uh, because broccoli was a big component of every salad I had and she said that's what you are getting that's the magnesium that you were getting from the chocolate you're getting in the broccoli and now your body's telling you we're good we don't need any chocolate yeah, it comes back down to the, those adrenal glands. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you took away your stimulant mm-hmm. and you started putting uh, some simple carbon in your body, fruits and vegetables, and you were, you were getting energy without stimulating your adrenal glands. But mm-hmm. because your adrenal glands were not being stimulated, it, send, it sent signals to your brain to think about the meat and the chocolate. Ah, oh, wow. That, that's something I didn't think about, Kevin. Wow. Well, Eat the Sunlight is your entire um, company here, but you're starting something really cool to help folks in 2017. Reclaim Your Health, 120-day challenge yeah. in your new Eat the Sunlight. Uh, to explain that challenge for everyone. 
Yeah, the Reclaim Your Health 120 Challenge, it's a guided transitional program, and it jumpstarts uh, a person's healing journey. And we give them, I have new medicinal herbal tea, and they get four months worth of that. They get uh, a coaching e-course that they can do, you know, week by week, and they get a specific plant-based diet. And the cool thing is that the diet escalates every month. So there's different levels. So, you know, you climb that mountain until you're at the one, day 120. And the whole purpose is to make people feel better on day 120 than they did on day one. And just to wrap all that up, we have a private Facebook group mm-hmm. where everyone congregates and we're starting a community. And, it, you, know, you know, one person might be on day 37 and one person might be on day one. But we're still all in the same boat and we're still helping each other. So I really think that this program is going to help a lot of people. And it's five years in the making based on all the experiences I've been through. So they get the tea, they get the education, and they get the meal plan slash recipes that come with the meal plan. So really cool, really cool program. Oh my gosh, it totally sounds really cool because I think one of the hardest parts and I found for all my friends I've talked to, even when I was doing the six week challenge, I went cold turkey. I got rid of everything overnight um, and just did it for six weeks and it was hard and I think what's really awesome about your program is the leading it step by step, level by level. It doesn't seem quite as intense. It's kind of like walking to the gym and said, I'm going to go to the most advanced course, lift all the heaviest weights and and then of course hurt, injure yourself uh, in the process but this way, doing a level by level you, you it kind of seeps into it comfortably and then by 120 you're like why would I go backwards this is right. um, a lifestyle change right and, and, and the first month the first 30 days is all transitional mm-hmm. so I take something out of their diet and add something into their diet so mm-hmm. so then they're not going through these withdrawals as heavy and then by the time they get to their second month you know day 30 then we implement a meal plan with recipes and then the next 30, you know, day 60, it's, we go to another level. And, uh, yeah, on day 121, they're going to be like, why do I want to go back? And, hey, we have a, another program after that that people can take if they so want to, if they want to make this a lifestyle change. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, if they want to on day 121, they can just go, all right, well, I'm just going to have steak, potatoes, and candy tonight because I'm done. Oh, wow. <laughs> they can make that decision, but I just don't think that they will. I I can't imagine after 120 days. I had heard, I don't know how true it is, that it's about 30 days that it takes for a habit to set in. I don't believe that. Because I've tried a couple of things for 30 days, and I've gone back to doing things the old way. I think the 120 sounds about a good time frame for someone to really get into your system and create a new lifestyle change. Absolutely. And I'm really, you know, on the marketing standpoint, I don't mind talking about the business slash marketing stuff. (laughs) I'm one of the only health guys out there that will talk about it. And I'll tell you, behind the scenes, when I was creating this thing, which took a long time, I got a big old whiteboard, and there's been plenty of diagrams on that whiteboard figuring this out. And let me tell you, when the day that it hit me, 120, was a great day because I was like, oh, my gosh, let's take Mm -hmm. 120 and let's make it part of the title. Mm -hmm pump this 120 thing so that it gets in people's head. 120, 120, 120, 120. It's four months. Four months doesn't sound as good as 120. Mm -hmm. Uh, So 120 days is four months. And it's just, it's not as intimidating as saying a year or a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it's also, there's a, there's a subliminal double meaning behind there, Christina, Mm -hmm. because Bible, it says that we're supposed to live to 120 years old, but that's another topic for another day. (laughs) Yeah. And then the way most people are living, we barely get to 60 or 70. And that's with a lot of quality of life going down the drain. And and do we want to live the last 20 years of our life on this planet, going to the doctor every other day and money medication? I I call it the Darth Vader syndrome, right? (laughs) Darth Vader was, you know, he was in a suit. And, uh, and he was on an air machine and he was, he was almost all machine. And, uh, and that's what a lot of Americans are going through. They're, they're, they're alive because of the pills. They're alive because of the surgeries to this, to that. And granted, sometimes it comes in handy, but when it comes to chronic illness, you know, we just don't need to suffer. We, we can reverse it because it's just a cellular issue and we just need to clean out and and regenerate those cells. 
Well, this couldn't have been better timing. I just had someone, a close friend, call me yesterday saying, I, I feel horrible. I feel fatigued all time, all days. I don't know what to do. I went to a nutritionist, paid a good penny, and she said, I need to do fruit to detox for one whole week, and I don't think I can do it. Yeah. And, and then I was like, I think you need to do eat the sunlight challenge because <laughs> – <laughs> It's a much better way to do it than just saying go cold turkey, do you know only fruit, nothing else for one week when you've never done a fast ever. Right, that's right, that's right. And we're we're, we're you know you know this from reading the book that you know I'm very pro fruit, and I do believe that we're frugivores like the apes, and I and fruit has I've seen I've seen it do amazing things to me, to other people, to clients, to colleagues. And uh, so it's a very big part of our program. We stress a mono fruit meal every day, at least every day, which is a meal of fruit, not just one apple, you know? So yeah. And speak to also how you've seen fasting help because I've heard the the pr promotions of fasting. Why is fasting such a good thing? I'm actually fasting right now. I'm on day, uh, day five or day six rather. But, uh, yeah, I, I fast every year, 60 days at least. Uh, mm -hmm. I do with juice and tea. Mm -hmm. so I'm not doing just water, but fasting, what it does is, uh, the best way that I describe it so that I don't get too scientific on people okay. is when you break your leg, they put you in a cast and they give you crutches. And the whole purpose is to stay off of your leg, right? So it can heal. Yes. So it's the same thing with fasting. When you fast, think of it like you're putting a cast on your internal organs and your colon. And you're saying, I'm just going to let it heal, stay off of it. So in other words, you're not eating anything that you have to digest. Mm. So you're just eating, you're just consuming liquids. You're still getting your calories. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still consuming, you know, a thousand calories a day. Mm -hmm. uh, through tea and juice, but I'm giving my colon a break. I'm giving my digestive system a break. I'm giving my pancreas. Okay, the pancreas is what puts out the enzymes to break down the food. My pancreas right now is like, oh, snap. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Like, for real. Like, thank you. I appreciate you right now. And uh, so, you know, my body is going to go into a resting uh, um, zone probably in another week. It takes about 10 days. Mm -hmm. Once you pass 10 days, your metabolism switches mm -hmm. and, you know, your calorie intake goes from like 1,000 to like 500. And I just need one, maybe two glasses of juice a day. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just living off water and my, and my medicinal teas and, and giving everything a break so that the cells can heal. Mm. And this is interesting because I know this would come up. Uh, I've heard this uh, people ask these questions before that, well, I couldn't possibly do that and keep up my normal regime of going to the gym, perhaps going to work. I might faint or pass out. My body wouldn't be able to function with the actual food. That's not true though, is it? No, it's not true. Uh, you do have to transition. So you don't want to go from burgers and fries to just juice. <laughs> you know, you're going to detox your brains out, maybe even end up in the hospital. Wow. You know, what I did to transition is I drank juice all day and then had a meal at six o'clock at night. So mm -hmm. I did that for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did that before I started all juice. So you, know, you have to transition into it. Um, but yeah, you don't actually, you get more energy because again, your digestive system is on vacation. So, you know, your body has more time mm -hmm. to, to, to give energy in other places. So it's, it's a really beautiful thing. And it's, it's ancient too. I mean, this goes long before, <laughs> this goes long before there was television, radio, computers, et cetera. I mean, this is very ancient and animals still do it. Mm, really? Mm -hmm. oh, if a lion wasn't feeling good, it would just stop eating. Isn't that something? And, and we think we have to go out and get some need to help our body heal. And the body's like, no, 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 I'm working on healing your body. Don't give me anything else to work with here. Well, it, it's interesting because when, when we think about being sick and here in America, we've been conditioned to automatically think chicken soup. Oh, yes, that's true. So isn't that interesting that soup is basically liquid? <sighs> You're right, with some chicken broth and yeah. bits of, yeah, yeah, interesting. Wow, it's, 
Yeah. And it's, I, I've been on fast, but my fast have never been more than 10 days. And I started out, I always transitioned with uh, fruits and vegetables, eating, you know, solid fruits and vegetables for a week yep. before I even think to do that. I'm glad you mentioned that because some people are like, I could never do that. And if they do th- do that, as you said, it could be very detrimental to your health if you're on a SAD, sad diet, standard American diet, and then just switch right over to just eating fruits or, or water, your body's going to be like, whoa, 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 what did you just do to me here? <laughs> yeah, I'm very big in the transitioning. And uh, that's something I've, I've had a part of all my programs over the last five years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of health practitioners out there that do not transition people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just I just think that that's the wrong way to go. Yeah, yeah. And that that's what makes them quit after a day or two because they feel so faint and they feel horrible and, and rightly so because their body is going through a major detox. And they really need that kind of help, which you're going to be able to give them. Now explain for me, because part of your program is adding your medicinal teeth. Why are their teeth so helpful for also helping the body get back into shape and, and full health? Sure. Well, herbs are our original medicine. Long before there was big pharma, there was herbs. And, you know, not only for us, but the animals, you know, uh, apes use herbs to help rid themselves of parasites. Um, Certain animals in the wild use plantain herb when they get bit by a poisonous snake to neutralize the poison. I mean, this is just what's been around for forever. And Mm -hmm. so I wanted to bring that back in the form of tea because I think everyone understands a beverage. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I can just get people to drink the tea two or three times a day, plus pair it with the right diet, magic is going to happen in their body. So that's what, that's where the 120 program came from is that idea of drink the tea, eat a certain way, you're good. Mm-hmm. But how do you get people to do that? You gotta, you gotta create a structured program, but the medicinal tea I have, there's 12 different kinds, mm-hmm. you know, everything from kidneys to joints to fungus to sinus to helping people sleep um so there's many different blends Mm -hmm. and i had a professional herbalist make the blends so everything is organic and 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 put together very nicely and and uh it's 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 just a really cool product that's helping a lot of people Mm -hmm. and uh so when you get the 120 program you get four months worth of uh my daily cleanser tea which supports the lymphatic system, which is how we clean our waste. And it supports the liver and it supports the kidneys so that you're basically cleansing uh, cellular waste. So a lot of people think it's a laxative, but it's not. It's Mm. just cellular waste, which is going to come out through your urine. Ooh, wow, that's great. Right now I'm actually on a green drink uh, that's full of vitamins and stuff that was also mixed by a herbalist. It's fabulous stuff. And it's not bad tasting. How, what's the response you've received from the people who have tried the tea? Oh, great. And a, a lot of people who, when they think of tea, they think of sugar. Put sugar yeah. in it. Oh, yeah. Well, no. One of the biggest responses that I've gotten is, wow, I don't even put sugar in it. And uh, that's because the herbalist, what she does is she adds uh, – peppermint or spearmint to almost all of them so they all pretty much all have a nice minty taste Ooh, nice and i also like i've added like straight up cinnamon which gives it a kind of sweet flavor yeah yeah very nice yeah this has been awesome. Well, I've, I've really, really enjoyed our conversation. I'm really hoping people will get out there, get healthy today because yes. we want 2017 to be the best year for everyone. Tell them or share with them where they can find out more about your challenge and sign up today. Yes, go to eatthesunlight.com, eatthesunlight.com, and uh, there'll be a page where you can look through the medicinal teas, and there's also a page for programs and books, and that's where you'll find the 120 Challenge as well as my book. And everything that you need is on eatthesunlight.com. So, And, of course, follow me on social media. My Facebook page is really my hub. We just hit 60,000 followers. So, you know, facebook.com slash Kevin W. Reese Official. Ooh, awesome. And mind you guys, uh, not only Diet, De-Stress, Detox is a wonderful book, you also have a um, audio root cause, which talks about the root causes of illnesses and protein kills. Very important. We were talking a little bit about protein earlier in the conversation with meat. So uh, there's a number of great resources out there along with your wonderful new program. So everyone, please go to eatthesunlight.com today. And I want to thank you again, Kevin, for coming to Savvy Business Radio. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
After five years of creating exciting business content with amazing businesses from around the world, Savvy is now creating a new video series entitled Heartbeat of the World. This series will feature experts from around the globe. We will highlight and discuss some of the greatest challenges facing the U.S. and the world. Co-create with us and find out more at bit.ly slash Savvy Patron.